Hello, guys. Uh, we'll just get started here in a couple of minutes. We're just waiting for everyone to join in and giving them some time. Awesome. Just giving everyone a minute or so before I start here. Hello, everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing well and enjoying their long weekend. This is Annie, and I run the iTrade Price platform with uh, my husband, UC. Both of us, we have been active traders. UC, who is also my mentor, has been trading for the past 15 years now. Now, you must have heard both of us talking about different topics and exchanging ideas. But today's session is about how to trade on key price levels. Now, when it comes to trading, everyone is different. Few people like to swing trade, right? And some are day traders and they like to trade using options. But something that every trader should have is a framework. In other words, you must have a trading methodology. So there is some structure in your approach when you enter or take a trade. We both use key price levels along with the knowledge of analyzing a chart based on price action to put a structure to our trading. Um, now, without any further delay, let me pass it on to UC, uh, who is going to talk more about it, take you through some of the recent examples and explain you in detail. Awesome, thanks Annie. Hope everybody's doing well on this long Labor Day weekend. So uh, not going to get into the details of what we do. You already kind of know a little bit about that. You can always visit the website if you're new. Uh, but to today's session is about trading or just finding more information around what is a key price level, right? So visually speaking, a key price level is where the price will find resistance if it's moving up, right? Or it will find support if it's moving down, right? So if, if you take a look at this example of hourly chart of Tesla, you can see how when the price comes to this 596 area, actually even let's go towards the left side, once it broke down that 596 area, it became uh, on any up move, it became a resistance, right? It, the, the, 
the price would kind of get rejected from this area right here on 596, go back down, find support around 550, 553 and come back up. So generally speaking, this is an important level that one should consider in their trading, right? So it becomes um, sort of a key price level. Now, again, there is a certain methodologies where you have to be consistent to come up with these levels. You just can't create these levels just because something is bouncing against a level and you're like, okay, this is a resistance. This is a resistance. You can't just, you know, kind of have too many of them if uh, on a chart. You have to have a certain methodology, a consistent framework so that no matter what chart you're analyzing, your approach is the same. Okay. So that's very important. And these key price levels, we share these price levels every morning with our, uh, our members, right? I, we create these levels after the market close uh, to get ready for the next day. Uh, I'll look at all the different time frames, uh, create trend lines, price channels, just analyze different candlesticks, their structure, uh, their location, and then kind of come up with these levels. So uh, the idea is that whenever a price would come to this level, it would either bounce or get rejected or break through it, right? So we publish these price levels every day uh, and it helps you uh, remain focused. You're not looking around at thousand tickers or hundred tickers and trying to figure out what do I do? You already have the structure in front of you for these core set of names that we follow. And I keep on switching uh, few names every now and then based on how they're running. Like for example, MRNA is in uh, sort of a news these days. It's giving good liquidity, good range. Uh, so it's a good stock for day trading purposes, right? It, a lot of people are trading that name. So it becomes easy to uh, trade that name. Uh, and it's, it's just easy to come up with the key levels for those kind of names, okay? But if you are interested to learn on your own, uh, the master uh, trader coursework that is on the website. Uh, there's a section in there, uh, uh, and I'll kind of go into detail about that later as well, uh, which talks about how to create these key price levels, right? What's the methodology? What's the process? What the framework should look like? What your sort of candlesticks you should be looking at? Uh, what you should be ignoring uh, when you are trying to create these price levels, uh, because not every level is of importance or should not carry equal weight, right? So you need to worry about the quality of the level as well. Uh, so yeah, if you want to learn on these own, on your own, uh, we do have the coursework that kind of uh, uh, takes you through that. So why use key price levels, right? Uh, now it's important just kind of back it up a little bit is what kind of a trader are you? Because that will help you determine for what purpose you are going to use this key level for, for day traders, right? Who are actively trading, uh, uh, me and any both uh, are primarily active traders, right? We are day traders. We don't like to carry overnight positions. Sure, if it's a swing trade, that's a separate thing, but most of the trades are day trades, right? So when you're day trading, the idea is you enter at the most optimal level based on your plan so that you don't see a big drawdown, right? So that your stop loss is not activated or is not hit, right? So, so you remain in the trade. So that's why you need to figure out these levels. These levels will help you pinpoint the entry where you need to uh, enter a, uh, uh, the trade so that there's a minimal chance of a drawdown or a stop loss, right? So it's important for day traders. Why is it important for swing traders? Uh, we all, again, we all know that people who swing trade are busy individuals. They can't look at the screen all the time. So, but still these uh, key levels play an important role because you want to plan your trade accordingly and spread out your buys in a zone, right? And we'll talk about that. I kind of created this little thing called green box that I'll start using in my uh, charts going forward, uh, basically those green boxes will, on the chart, will identify an area where one should start initiating a swing trade, right? As long as the stock price is in that green box, you should be should be uh, uh, looking to, uh, to enter that trade and not 
enter all at once, you're going to space it out because for swing trades, it's not going to take one day or two days to get you to your target. Yes, there could be chances, but but for a swing trade, it's it's supposed to remain open for a few weeks to maybe a couple of months or things like that, right? So you need to kind of space out your buys. You need to practice position sizing so that uh, your risk is contained, okay? Uh, for option traders, since option trading uh, is, is a leveraged sort of a, a trading activity, so you need to time your trade uh, very carefully so that the premium uh, does not decay fast, right? Uh, otherwise, it, I'll show you an example where even if the stock is moving in your direction, but the premiums are not going up and that will happen, right? Because stock uh, options are, uh, you know, the price of an option is uh, impacted by its volatility, by, by the time decay, by other factors that are outside of your control. So it's not just the underlying price it's that controls it. So that's why trading on a key price level for an option trader is also important, right? Uh, Let's take a look at a couple of examples, recent examples. So this is an example uh, which I shared on the Discord and also on the Twitter as well for our active members. And we post these levels, these charts during the market hours. We post these, uh, 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 these setups, right? So somebody was asking or actually sent us a question like, do you post alerts? So let me just make that clear. These trading setups that we post in the morning right on Twitter and on Discord. These are our alerts because we trade based on these setups, right? So so when, so for example, this is the chart of five minute chart of Amazon, right? That was shared uh, pre-market yesterday before market open, right? So the idea is, again, this will all have all these key levels identified, right? On the chart. Right here, 34, 48, 39, 13, and then you have this uptrend line, this mini lower time frame channel. So based on that, what I wrote was that would like to get in a bounce trade if the price comes in this zone of 3448 and 3449, right? Let me kind of zoom in a little bit and make you see it better. So I had a plan that if the price opens up weak and goes below 34.48 all the way to 34.39, that's where you should be looking to buy, right? You should be looking to trade the bounce here. Okay, now what happened when the uh, uh, market opened? Let's zoom in a little bit. Now this is the price of Amazon. I think this is a two minute chart. Okay, so you can see first two minutes, we open right above the zone. And in the next five minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, the price kept on dropping in our zone, right? So I'm, I'm, actually, I'm trading, right? So I'm actually buying here, right? I'm trading options. I'm buying 3450C, uh, 3460C, or even scalping, or even uh, looking to day trade us, you know, with shares. So, and as soon as we get in, we let our members know. But of course, the price is not going to wait for you to join that, hey, if such and such person is going to enter only, then I'm going to go up, right? It's not going to wait for everybody. So that's why these are official alerts, the trading setups. As soon as you see the price in this zone, enter, right? Whether you're using option, whether you are using shares, enter the trade, right? And as it moves back up, start trimming, right? The option prices move um, you know, in a really a volatile fashion, okay? And I'll tell you, and I'll show you actually the price of how 3450C moved. But before we get there, so the idea is that we share this setup before market open. And as soon as the price meets that criteria, as soon as it's in the zone, we enter the trade, right? Uh, so now let's look at what actually happened. <laughs> Uh, again, I'll zoom in a little bit. This helps you see it better. So this was the entry zone, right? If you're sharing, if you're trading the uh, shares, you're fine. You know, you're buying somewhere here at 3445, 3440, and it went up like $10. But if you had waited all the way till the end of the day, it went up like $30, $30, right? But now let's see what happened to the price of the option, right? Here's the option chart. Here's the 3450C chart. Uh, uh, for, for yesterday, right? So 
if you're buying 3450C when the price drops in that zone, you would have gotten a fill between somewhere around 12 all the way to eight, right? You would have gotten a fill between 12 and $8, depending on where you place the order, how it got executed, or if it was a conditional order or you traded manually or whatever, right? But as when the price dropped in that zone, you would have gotten a fill between 12 and eight. Now, after like maybe 20, 30 minutes, the price went all the way up to 18, right? Start trimming, start taking profits. Now see one more thing, as the price dropped, right here, Amazon stock price dropped, but it still stayed above its low of the day. The stock price went all the way down, right? That's because it's, it's, it's decaying, right? It's a, it's a decaying instrument. The price will not stay the same. So if somebody comes and says, hey, are you still in the trade? No, I am not. Yes, I've taken majority of my profits. Option trades are quick trades. And this one has, uh, you know, it was a same day expiration. So, so nobody should be asking if you're holding the trades or not, because you should already know these things. Yes, it would have paid you really well had you held on to it till the end of the day, because it went all the way till 28 or even $30. But nobody knew this is going to happen, right? As an option trader, 90% uh, of your trade should have been closed. Maybe the last 10% position or maybe one contract, uh, you just let it ride and see what happens. But you should not be even doing that. That's not a consistent way to trade. So uh, think of think among, on these lines, right? So this is a setup that we are going to enter a trade uh, based on the key price level between this and this key price level, okay? So that gives you a good idea. Now let's look at another one, Roku. So this Roku chart was shared yesterday again before market open, right? It was down maybe $10, $12 already in pre-market. So I wanted to try to bounce straight this thing between 332.9 and 328.4. This is my bounce area. So that means when the price gets here, uh, you know, buy the stock. Or if you want to wait and see, okay, drops there, comes back above this support level, right? Above this 332.9 level, you can enter that as well. I usually like to get in as soon as the price kind of, if it's a range like this, I like to get in sometimes uh, towards the middle, right? Because I don't know if it will go all the way down or not, but that's where I would like to enter. Now, let's see what happened. Roku. So this is again, a five minute chart. You can see when Roku opened, it opened right, above 332.9, it dropped all the way down to 331 in the first five minutes and then gave up this long bottom wick. And then just, you know, for the next 10 minutes, it just stayed in the same area. Uh, and then it just shot up like, you know, $10, $12 up uh, in the next 30 minutes or so. So that was the alert. That was the plan that get in a long position when the stock price gets in this zone, right? It's not going to wait for uh, us to tell you that, hey, the price is already in. This is our alert, get in, right? Uh, yes, we tweet it out. We let people know on, uh, on uh, 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 what do you call that, Discord, that yes, we got in, but by the time you're gonna look at it, the price will have changed. So it's more than likely you might not get the same favorable price if you are trading the bounce, or you can get it because had the price gone back down into the zone, you might have gotten a better price. But, but the idea is you can't be really stuck on what price level anybody else gets in, right? You are trading your own chart, your own plan with your own account. So you should be uh, knowing what you are doing. Now, this is what happened to the price of the Roku, right? As it dropped, it went back up. But had you gotten into 340C, right? So that it would have given you an execution based on uh, where you would have entered anywhere between two to one dollar, right? That's where the initial drop was. And then it went up like 300% or I don't know, 300%, yeah, 200% or 300%, depending on what price you would have gotten all the way to six, right? In the next hour, right? And then it just kind of price stayed up above 340, 338. But the option price, look at that, it went all the way from six down to one or even below that, right? By the time it got closed. So that tells you options should be traded quickly, right? Unless you are, I don't know, swinging an option, something far out and you have a plan or something, but these are day trades. These are meant to be traded 
quickly. You can't sit on it. You can't just, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 wait for it to go all the way up like 500% and give you that kind of return. No, uh, get five or 10 contracts right there. If it goes up by 100%, 50, 60%, get rid of the 50% position and then let's see what happens next. So train, scale into strength. That should be your idea based on the key price level entry, right? Uh, and you have seen that we not only trade the breakouts, we always like to get into, uh, also like to get into the bounce trades and the rejection plays, which are basically buying a put or shorting a stock on strength, right? So that's that means we're technical traders. We're not only breakout traders, which where we are only looking to get into a trade that's running. Okay, so those were examples of day trades using the key price levels. Now, what about swing trades, right? Because there are people who like to swing trade uh, stocks as well. They don't have the time to sit in front of the computer all day, actively managing a position. So this example, a recent example, uh, where I've also introduced this sort of a green box concept or whatever you want to call it, uh, is that uh, this is a chart of Visa, right? A daily chart of Visa. And what I'm trying to tell everybody here is that this was these two uh, levels, 227 or something, and 220 uh, mark uh, uh, an important key level for this stock. One second, please. So as you can see, this was uh, resistance on the way up. So this should act as a, as a support. So this is a zone. Right for swing trades, you gotta space out your bias, uh, and this was given back in September first. Right, I published this chart on September first with my reasoning, with the why behind why are we looking to trade this name, and where we should be entering. Right, so this said to enter this swing trade between two twenty seven and two twenty. Right, so seven dollar range for a swing trade. Now, let's see what happened yesterday uh, when the stock dropped here in the zone, right? Below 227, it went all the way till uh, something like 221 or something, right? So that means start a position, which I did, right? I, I initiated a position in Visa stock with like, you know, one third of my full position that I would like to kind of build it on. So I would like to... Uh, keep accumulating the shares as long as the price remains in green box, right? And once it starts moving up towards 230, 234, you start scaling, right? Or at least start raising your stop loss so that you do not let your uh, green trade turn red. So that is very important, right? So that's why I'm going to start publishing these charts and marking these zones as green box, as this will help you identify where to start building a position. Okay, so that's really helpful. Uh, another example, uh, JD, right? Uh, I gave this position, I gave this chart earlier. Oh, well, this is not that exact chart, but the chart said to look for uh, uh, you know a zone to start buying. This green box was a zone, and this another green box here should can also be a green zone. Should also be a, a, a place where you can start you know to add to your position. So I already started doing that on August 30th, but uh, this one is also a good area to start accumulating. Uh, all the price action structure looks bullish, good volume. Once it gets above 82.5, I think 87, 88 region can come uh, quickly. Uh, this is a weekly chart. So again, in a swing trade, you're not worried about your position on a day-to-day -day moves. You're just kind of looking at different, you know, uh, uh, like a zone and see if as long as it holds that general area, uh, you're fine, right? So so this is the position and this is what I'm going to do going forward, I'm going to identify these areas as green boxes. Again, if you are an option trader, you can always enter, uh, I would say, at least four, five, six months out option position so that you're buying time, right? We're giving these these swing trades to play out in a month or two months time, right? So you want to buy an option that has a minimal impact from time uh, uh, decay purposes, right? From, from that perspective. So you want to buy at least something that is slightly in the money or close to the money, which means close to the current price, right? price, right? So you want to stick to that kind of a uh, trade if you are swinging uh, an option, okay? All right. 
So before we wrap up or anything like that, uh, there were a couple of things where folks wanted me to touch base on the concept of stop loss. Okay, so the way I think of stop loss, and I have talked to so many people, and actually I struggled with it myself as well, right? Everybody does. Uh, there are two sides. There's an emotional side, and then there's a chart-based logical side, right? What so so emotional side is when you start taking a stop loss because because you're seeing your position down by 50% and you're like, oh my God, it's not going to work. I'm just going to bail out. And you start getting emotional. You did not have any plan when you got into the position. Uh, you're, uh, and you know, one thing leads to the other. Uh, and then you just become emotional and you close the position, right? So there was no logical thinking involved on why you close the position, uh, why you got in there. So that leads to decisions that are emotional and not really, uh, I would say, uh, helpful in the longer run. So the side that you need to worry about or you need to focus on is a chart-based stop loss. Now, chart-based stop loss is easy when you're trading uh, a, a stock, right? Let's go take a look at, for example, this Amazon trade, right? This one right here. So now, if you are trading a stock, right, you entered here in this zone, let's say you entered at 34.40, what should your stop loss be based on this, right? Again, the logical way is that the next support level down, the next key level down, that is also a support, should be your stop loss, right, from chart perspective, because as long as the price does not go there or stays above it, you don't need to worry about it. Yes, it can kind of hover around where you got in, but then it went back up or it will go back up. So, so you don't need to worry about it. But if you're trading an option, then the stop loss kind of does not work in a similar way because even if the stock goes up or you know remains flat from where you got in, uh, your option is losing money, right? Your option is decaying. So for that reason, yes, you can still base your your stop loss on the chart because it can very well, options can very well lose 50, 60% of their value. And the next day when the stock rallies, it can just kind of, you know, go back up to green or positive from where you entered. So, so you can't really make it an emotional decision when it comes to an option based, uh, a stop loss based on, on an option. So yes, I would say treat it as where you're like, okay, I'm not going to come out of this option stop uh, unless or until it goes below a certain key level, right? Give yourself some logical uh, way of defining your stop loss. Do not make it that, hey, if my, my, my price is down 40% of my premium is down 40%, I'm going to take a hit. Yes, that can be a strategy, but more often than not, if I have seen option prices go back up. So, 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 you know, either go small or if you go in with a bigger position, always scale or always have a chart based stop loss, right? So that you are not making a decision that's emotional or that is uh, illogical when it comes to stop losses, okay? Uh, and position sizing is key, right? You already should know. So for example, if you were trading this or if you had a plan to trade an option here on a dip buy, don't go buy 3550 or 3500c at that level right because even if the stock jumps 10 12 dollars your option will not go up that much right because it's too far out of the money okay so you need to stay but that means that anything that is closer to the money will be a little bit expensive because it will have a higher delta so but that's the thing you know you have to you have to evaluate that what am I doing? Is it a bounce play? If it's a bounce play, I should stick to something that is closer to the current price. I should stick to the strike price that is closer to the current price so that when the bounce occurs, I get the maximum benefit. I get the maximum exposure, the maximum delta impacting my option price. Because you're already, uh, uh, you know, pay, uh, you're already entering based on a very accurate level, right? So, so your trade should work quickly, right? It's not like where you're entering and you're giving yourself half a day to see if it works or not. No. So these are day trades. So these should work relatively quickly. If not, that means uh, the setup did not play out. It's not working out. So either take a quick stop loss or just 
you know, uh, start trimming your position into strength quicker than you had thought. Uh, so that's very important when you are looking at these uh, trades, like what kind of a setup is that, right? What day is it? Is it Monday or Tuesday when I'm entering where the time value will not be impacting my option premium that much? Or if it's Thursday or Friday where the, uh, the decay will be super fast because you're getting closer to expiration very quickly, right? So you need to worry about those things and take uh, those things into account. And find your niche, okay? A lot of people struggle uh, they copy somebody else, they start following other people's randomly, what their trades are. And everybody, you know, on Twitter or anybody's social media, nobody's going to put their negative trades, red trades. Everybody's going to show off their best trades, right? And then they think that they are doing good or I should have done that as well. Not a great way to be learning, right? So you should find what you are good at. Okay. And the way to do it is try it out different things, figure out what your personality is. You know, are you a short-term trader, long-term trader, what your daily routine is, uh, what your lifestyle is, and then, then adjust your trading style and strategy around that, you know, develop a methodology and a framework. You look at a chart so it's consistent. You know, you're not looking at an Amazon chart today differently or analyzing it differently. And then tomorrow, you look at the uh, another chart of Roku or, or, or NVIDIA and you're like, okay, this should be analyzed differently. No, have a consistent approach so that when you come up with these key price levels, the methodology that you use to come up with those levels uh, is the same, right? So if, if, if you can justify yourself, that's what is important, right? And you should have a platform that is gives you the flexibility to execute and automate trades, right? I like... It has given me all the flexibility, all the tools, uh, right? Like I can make these templates uh, for different kind of trades. Uh, I can save those templates. I can quickly pick my share size. If I want to trade an option, I can quickly just convert this from a 3480 call to 3480p, right? By just entering C or P, I can enter the strike to just change the strike here will change the strike here i can buy from market so basically you have to have a platform that is uh, that is advanced that is optimized for day trading right and then discipline and patience are two key things a lot of people chase i don't like to chase a stock that is running i always like to wait for a pullback right and there are different ways to look into a pullback when you are trading uh develop those skills right uh, I know I'm not good at everything, but what I'm good at, I kind of improved that. I worked on it and I mastered it. So don't, I always like to say, don't be jack of all trades, but master of none. Okay. So focus on few things so that you are, uh, 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 you know, structured and you look at any chart in a consistent way. And that will help you. That will give you the confidence that you need. Okay. Uh, let me see one more thing before I let you guys go. I need to open Chrome. Let me see if I can share that with you because some of you asked. Uh, okay, before we move there, we have this Labor Day sale going on where the Master Trader coursework, which tells you, actually, I want to show you if I can close this thing. Uh, how do you do that? Okay, there you go. Uh, Chrome, let me open Chrome. I'll bring it over here. Let me see if I can show you the coursework. A couple of people ask, what is in the master trading course? So I'll I'll just show that to you guys. Okay. Uh, my library. Okay. All right. So there's the introduction, right? Program outline, what the price action approach is. And for any trader, right, for any trading, you have to know the basics, right, of candlesticks, what are the patterns, and then there are some exercises. And as a trader, swing trader, or even a day trader, you need to have a sense of how to define a market direction, right? You always start your analysis from top-down approach, right? So you look at the market direction. How do you define a market direction? You know, you have to have an objective way of doing that. So you can do that by defining swing pivots and trend lines. That's how I do it. And that's how I have laid out how to um, figure out the trend, right? There are some exercises, trading setups, different type of candlesticks. What do they mean? You can call them whatever, but, but the point is 
how do you read them? What do they mean in the way this kind of show up? And then expectancy, right? You can't be trading every setup. You have to kind of define that does it have a positive expectancy? Will it go towards the, my target, right? How do you define those targets? You know, with using price channels or some other methodology? And then how do you bring it all together? And this is where everybody gets interested that how do you create these key price levels, right? So that is that is what our session was about today, uh, trading on key price levels, some examples, and then you schedule your session with us. And then, added some bonus strategies, right? A lot of people ask if there are other trading setups that I trade personally, and I could think of few that I had not initially, so I added those in there. And then also there's cryptocurrency trading uh, as well, because there are, it's a new emerging uh, instrument that people like to trade. So there's, there's a different way that one should be handling cryptocurrency trading. Okay, uh, because of the volatility it has and, and the way it moves. Okay, there's some other setups also, and then also a section on how to execute a trade. Right, what should your thought process be? What kind of orders you should be using? How do you deploy your order? So, and if there are people who are into scalp trading, uh, with some examples and what you should be looking, how I scalp trade, also that action, and then some practical tips like you know. Um, if you are a price action trader, if you're having a bad day, how do you bounce back? How do you avoid revenge trading? If you have a small account, you know, what are the practical ways to grow that, right? Uh, because otherwise people end up going and all that stuff. So we do have a sale going on this for the Labor Day if you are interested. But hope you guys like this little session on the price section uh, that I showed you and also uh, what you should be doing to trade this based on your, uh, you know, account size or understanding. Uh, Everybody is different, right? Everybody trades differently. But as long as your methodology is right, you have a certain way to approach a chart. Uh, you have a plan every morning where you will be entering or you will be taking your profits and you're not going to chase something that is running. Or even if you want to chase, you have a certain way you do that. Basically, there's nothing wrong when trading a breakout, right? But there's a way to do it, right? And you should be always entering at a key price level. Why? Because you never know what stock is going to fail when, right? You need to minimize your drawdown and your uh, stop losses. So the only way to do that is by making sure you enter at these key price levels. You give yourself a chance uh, 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 where you know you're minimizing your uh, uh your, your your chance of getting stopped out from a position right and you're giving yourself you're making an educated uh entry you're not just running after something because it's running or so stocks is not going are not going to run every day so you have to if you want to do it for a living you have to be tactical right you need to be able to trade in every market you need to be able to trade uh uh, uh where the markets, even if it's not running, you are comfortable in trading these things, okay? So hope you guys like this. I will make this video available on YouTube channel later today once I get this all uh, uploaded on YouTube. If you have any questions, please uh, email us at uc at itradeprice.com or you can always message us on Twitter or I think any is active on Facebook group as well. You can always leave us messages there as well. Okay, hope you guys like this session. And I know everybody's busy in this long weekend. And you have things to do, so I will not keep you here for long. Uh, if you ever get uh, uh, interested or anything else, please leave us a message and we will get back to you. Thank you, everyone, and have a good and super rest of your weekend. Okay, thank you.